The introduction of the Lynx Smart BMS by Victron has made the installation of systems with their smart lithium batteries so much more straightforward. However, there are a couple of little things that might seem slightly counterintuitive, particularly when you're looking at the settings on the Multi Plus or Multi or Quattro. And I thought it would be useful just to have a quick walk through the product, and then we can have a look at the settings, how they appear on the VE Configure, so that I can just talk through some of those things that might look slightly anomalous but actually are um, pretty clear cut once you understand how it all works. So I'm gonna start off talking about the product itself. I've got the Lynx BMS in front of me, but this would normally be configured with a Lynx power in on this side and a Lynx distributor on the output side. Those two modules just connect uh, with studded terminals on the power in, it connects to these protruding buzz bars. And once all connected, it's a seamless uh, unit. The Lynx power in is effectively just two buzz bars, a positive and a negative buzz bar, and it allows you to connect four batteries and link those through each of those batteries with its own stud terminal. The Lynx distributor has fuses and fuse failure detection built into it, and we'll talk a little bit about how that communicates that information back through the Lynx Smart BMS and off to the system uh, in a little bit. So if we have a quick look inside, I'll point to some of the key components, again, just for a matter of interest really, and to give you a bit of the topology of the unit. Broadly speaking, the Lynx BMS consists of a negative buzz bar with a shunt, and that shunt allows us to record the amount of current flowing in and out of the batteries, and in so doing, record the state of charge or calculate the state of charge of the batteries. Then there's a positive buzz bar, this positive buzz bar, though, has a contactor uh, um, between the input and the output terminals. And this contactor provides a means of isolation. And that isolation can be used either as a main battery isolator for manual control by the user of the boat, but it is also a protection contactor for the batteries. And this will open in the event that the batteries are over discharged or are overcharged. So it serves two functions. So we can see here that the buzz bar continues across onto the two stud terminals of the contactor, uh, and that provides the isolation there. One of the things when you're connecting large batteries to a large inverter charger is that there's a significant amount of inrush current when you first connect the inverter, and that's because they've got large capacitors built into them. And those capacitors uh, take a glug of energy when you first connect them. And there's a risk during that connection period that you get an arc on that uh, main contact and that will degrade the quality of the contact and over time uh, will damage the switch. So built into this BMS is what's called a pre-charge circuit. And this resistor here is the device that performs that kind of pre-charge function. So when we go to turn on the contactor, these, uh, the microcontroller within the BMS will actually connect the input and the output side of the buzz bar through this resistor for a period prior to closing the main contactor contacts. And what that allows us to do is to, is to bleed a, a, a controlled amount of power from the batteries into the Quattro or uh, Multi Plus to pre-charge all of those capacitors so that they're all full before we actually turn on the main contact and therefore avoid or mitigate the risk of that contact erosion. So that's the kind of main functionality of the unit covered. In addition, we have a, a couple of fans to provide some cooling because it's clearly a very compact device and we've got a 500 amp rated contactor and buzz bars within the unit. So a little bit of forced cooling may be required when you're operating it hard. And if we have a look at the connection panel, what we can see here is uh, an array of different connections for various devices. So I'm gonna walk those through one at a time. These two connectors here are for the BMS cables of the smart batteries. Each smart battery has got a, a, an in and an out. You daisy chain them uh, together and then uh, the, the two ends of that daisy chain connect into the BMS. These cables, allow the batteries to indicate if there is a charging or a discharge issue to the BMS. Next, we have two ports for VECAN. So this is a CAN protocol connection 
and is designed to connect to a, a Serbo or other GX device. And this allows the VMS to communicate at things like state of charge, uh, for us to see other parameters, and more importantly, to communicate the battery status back to the servo. We've got these two little RJ10 ports at either end, and this is how the fuse status of the Lynx distributors is communicated back to the BMS. So there's just a little link cable that links across to the distributor, and this uh, carries the data on fuse status back, and this is then communicated back to the system over VECAM. So finally, we'll have a look at these terminal blocks here. Uh, we've got AUX, ATC, ATD, Relay and Remote. And I'm just going to quickly run through what those all do. The AUX is a locally sourced DC power supply that you can use through these volt-free contacts, ATC, ATD and Relay. The ATC is allowed to charge and this relay opens prior to the main protection contactor opening. So in other words, this allows you to turn off a charging device before the main contactor opens and kills the whole system. And it's great for controlling charging devices that cannot be controlled uh, via VE CAN and through the servo. So potentially a third party solar charge controller, for instance. Allow to discharge works in pretty much the same way, but on the, uh, on the low battery side of things. So it will allow you to turn off a load prior to the main protection contactor opening. And again, this is a volt-free contact that's available for you to wire in potentially through uh, external relays, etc. We have a programmable relay and with this programmable relay, you get given access to both the normally closed and the normally open contacts. And this can be configured using the VE Connect app. Finally, you'll see that there's a link wire provided uh, across terminals 10 and 11 uh, by default from the factory. This link wire can be replaced with a remote switch, and this will then allow you to open and close the main contactor manually to provide a manual battery isolator switch for the system as well as its use as an automatic one based on the battery condition. So you'll notice on the bench, I've got this Victron uh, Servo GX uh, beside me. And that's because this really is an integral part of making a Lynx smart BMS work. So the Servo is really the brain of the operation under these circumstances. And what that allows for is for smart control of the various charging and discharging devices connected to it based upon the information that's coming from the smart BMS. So if I make a, uh, an example, in the event that we're getting quite low on state of charge and we're approaching the voltage limit uh, that's allowable on the batteries, the first thing that we'll get is a trigger to say that we should stop discharging. And this is uh, to give us a bit of a buffer so that some essential circuits can continue to operate before we actually hit the main contactor. So at the point when that trigger is reached, our allow to discharge contact on this terminal block will open. And this will allow you to turn off any devices that you elect to control via that port. But via the VE CAN, the servo will then turn the inverter function off on a connected quattro or multi-plus. So at that point, we've done everything we can to turn off loads and therefore prevent the main contactor opening. And basically it operates in exactly the same way with charging, but it turns off charging sources rather than turning off loads. So the servo controls everything by enabling DVCC, which stands for Distributed Voltage and Current Control. In reality, this means that the servo is controlling things in a much more intelligent way. Rather than just turning things on or off, it's controlling the voltages and currents so that we're forming a bit of a balance. What the DVCC will allow for is to control things more elegantly than just simply on and off. So we can have a situation, for instance, where we're charging at 20 amps, um, but we've got 10 amps worth of loads, 10 amps therefore going into the battery. The battery communicates that it doesn't want to be charged at the moment. Rather than just turning the charging source off and flipping ourselves into a discharge situation, DVCC will set the charging current to 10 amps in order to match the loads and still satisfy the battery's requirement not to be charged. So we've been talking about DVCC and the thing that's new with this product is that it forces 
the DBCC function on in the system with a servo merely by being connected. And I guess this is the bit that potentially can catch you out. You can go into your Multi Plus, you can set your charging voltages, you can set your charge currents, you can set your battery type, and all of those settings remain fixed in the, uh, in the Quattro. However, the moment that you connect the BMS into the servo, it enables the DVCC function, and now all of those voltages are controlled by the brain here, by the servo and override all of the settings that you've made in VE Configure. This can seem confusing. You've set a, for instance, on a 24 volt system, a maximum charge voltage of 28 volts. You've set it up all through VE Configure. You go and look at a system operating and you see that the voltage differs from that. And that's purely because this unit here has taken control via the servo, via DVCC. So what I thought we'd do is have a quick look at a live system on a client's uh, vessel. Um, they do know we're doing it, and we will uh, have a look at what you can see on the V configure settings and what you can also see on the uh, GX interface. And uh, this will perhaps just put your mind at rest if you've got a system up and running that uh, there's nothing anomalous with what you've got, but it's just a reflection of the way that DVCC works. So I'm logged on to a client system and we can see here that uh, it's using a Quattro. We've got a grid supply and a generator supply on the left-hand side, currently only on shore power. And uh, it's running with some very nominal AC loads, a fully charged battery, and a little bit of power out on the DC system. What this overview also shows, uh, right in the center underneath the icon for the Quattro is the legend external control. And this is what tells us that DVCC is enabled and uh, that's therefore controlling charging voltages and current rather than the default settings within VE Configure. So let's have a look at how this would actually look on the boat itself. And we can do this by going uh, within VRM onto what's called Remote Console. And this brings up the actual live display that you would see on, on, on the vessel. We can see that we've got the words ext control at the top of the Quattro icon on the actual display on the vessel. Now we're going to have a look at what the VE configure settings are for the device on this particular vessel. And we could do that by connecting a laptop directly to the Quattro using a Mark III dongle, but it's also possible to extract the settings remotely via VE, uh, VRM. Now you can change these settings and reload them back up I'm not going to do that on this occasion. I'm just wanting to show what's actually in the device and to show how that varies from how it's operating because the Quattro is now being controlled via DVCC by the servo. In order to be able to do this, you need to have a copy of VE Configure on the machine you're working on. So to download the VE Configure settings, we go to Device List. This brings up this particular menu. Uh, because we've got a Quattro connected and we click on Remote VE Configure and then this downloads the VE Configure file. So once you open up the file in VE Configure, you'll see this uh, screen here and we're going to concentrate on these six tabs, which is General, Grid, Inverter Charger, Virtual Switch and Assistance. And really all I'm wanting to do here is to demonstrate the fact that we've got things programmed in here, but that actually DVCC is taking over control of it and uh, allowing the system to operate exactly as it should. So in the general tab here, we have set a shore current limit that is appropriate for the system. And that remains an active setting and is not overridden by DVCC. If we look at the grid tab, there's nothing actually configured here because this is really designed for applications where we've got some solar grid connect and uh, supplying energy back into the grid. So not so appropriate for a marine application. So then looking at the inverter tab, we have a mixture of things that are gonna be overwritten by DVC along with some hard written values. So things like power assist, absolutely not overridden by DVCC, but our low voltage cutoff values are now basically irrelevant. These are now controlled by the servo and will the inverter will be turned off if we hit a low voltage threshold as far as the batteries are concerned, not these values recorded here. And likewise on the charger 
side of things, we have a, a mixture as well. We've actually got some things that are set, so the maximum charge current has been set to the maximum capacity of this particular charger, 200 amps, not the default value. But you'll notice that there's no battery type being selected, so we haven't selected that we're working with lithium batteries. And as such, it means that all of these charger functions are all being driven directly by external control via DBCC from the servo. That includes things like repeated absorption, absorption periods, float voltages, pretty much all of the charging variables other than the maximum charge current limit, which is set here. On the virtual switch tab, basically you'll see that nothing is selected here. So there are no pre-configured virtual switch uh, options. Again, everything has just happened automatically by connecting the VE CAN output from the Link Smart BMS into the servo. So we have no need to set any of these for the normal operation of the battery system. And finally, the assistance tab. No assistance have been loaded. We haven't had to use any of the uh, assistance that you might otherwise use for lithium batteries. The whole installation is made much more straightforward and really just to recover the point that was made earlier, the only thing that might look slightly anomalous is that you could have set a charging voltage using VE configure that is effectively overridden by DVCC. And that might just be a little bit confusing, but that's the nature of the way that DVCC works. So hopefully I've conveyed how simple it is to configure a system with Victron smart lithium batteries using the Lynx smart BMS and how it's taken an awful lot of the configuration requirements out of the uh, out of the Quattro or Multi Plus, and that you now have a good idea of how that will all look if you're interrogating the system and understand why things might vary slightly from what you think you've set because of DVCC overwriting values. So if you want more information on these products, I'll put a link in the description below to our e-store where you can see the products and the data sheets. But these are substantial systems and if you want some uh, personal help with it, we'd be delighted to help with that. So just get in touch, email or phone us and our sales team will be happy to help.